Hello all. Now we are going to discuss about geography coordinate system. A coordinate system is a system or framework that uses numbers or coordinates to represent location over a surface. The surface can be a smaller or bigger or even covering the whole earth. But still, in all, we use the system of reference and those system of reference, we call it as coordinate system. These coordinate systems are depend on the models of the earth. The earth can be modeled in terms of flat, in terms of spherical, in terms of ellipsoid. So first we will discuss each one of this and its importance and we will go to other characteristics of earth shape models and coordinate systems. The flat earth models are good if you are use it for a, a plane survey of smaller area where I want to like construct a building for which I have to generate a plan and for this plan I can do a survey and I can mark the locations from the locations I can create a system of reference and using which I can able to measure the location distance direction etc etc very precisely so that the real objects and the plan what you have on the hand both will match each other with a scale fraction but whereas if area is larger more than 10 square kilometer area or covering the whole county or covering the whole nation or con continent under this flat earth models are helpless because the earth is not a flat body, rather it is a spherical body. So if you look earth from the moon or if you look earth from the space and you can able to understand it is a spherical body. So for this spherical body, we can develop a systematic coordinate system. So those like a coordinate system can be prepared with the help of like spherical earth models. These spherical earth models are very good for classroom demonstrations and understand the, or represent the globe in a nutshell and also to locate various locations of earth surface using uh, systems of graticular network. Here the sp spherical object are divided into parallels, meridians and the intersection of parallels and meridians will form a graticular network. So using this graticular network, you can refer various earth locations with a system of reference called the degree minutes and second or other units and you can able to represent all the futures. So these spherical models are very good and these graticules are very helpful to understand the various locations or various like places with the unique degree minutes and seconds so each and every place on this earth surface will have an intersection of parallels and meridians with unique values using which you can able to represent very easily so that it forms most accurate map with the help of latitude and longitude but the limitations are 
it is very expensive to make. And of course, if it is a smaller uh, globe on the table, you can able to do it. You can reduce the Earth's radius. Earth's radius is 6,370 kilometers. So that you can reduce into six inch of like a radius or six inch of ball. Then using which you can able to develop a system or called a graticule. This graticule we call it as the yeah, framework or datum surface using which you can able to represent the entire like earth futures especially the boundary of continents or boundary of like oceans or boundary of countries and etc all good if it is a smaller and handy but if you want to prepare a globe system of bigger in nature showing each and every detail in last class we discussed about the small scale large scale if you want to prepare a large scale map with the globe model it's very difficult and of course the units used in globe model or spherical model is degree minutes and seconds so it is very hard to do a calculation mathematical calculations and of course this globe model will represent at a time only one side of the earth to the other side will be hit up. So, although it has advantages of showing uh, that surface in very accurately, but still it has some limitations. In addition, the spherical model conceives earth as very smooth, yeah, spherical object, a yeah, smooth ball kind of, but actually not. The earth surface have a topography and topography have topography have various like variations, ups and downs. And these ups and downs make different masses because the ups and downs is made up of different densities of materials and this different density of materials will like create differences in gravity. So if you look at the earth surface, the earth surface have a different gravity somewhere the gravities are high, somewhere the gravities are low and even somewhere the mass of the earth is high, somewhere the mass of earth is low. So which all makes the earth is not a true spherical body, rather it is an irregular body. So to model this irregular body, body this spherical model is not good so that the geodesist cartographer scientists have developed that a new model to represent the spherical kind of earth that is called ellipsoidal model so these ellipsoidal model uses two radius one is called equatorial radius another one is called polar radius why? Because from the earth center, see here somewhere the distance is high. If you see somewhere here, the distance is low. So the difference between this area and this area cannot be represented truly with the spherical ball because the radius is similar throughout in spherical model. But whereas in ellipsoid model, you can identify the maximum to like a radius and using which you can able to prepare yeah relatively accurate earth models so that models we call it as ellipsoidal model so this ellipsoidal model although it has a two like a radius but still if you look at from a distance or if you look closely and the difference between this radius and this radius it's not that big it's not like like this it's not like like egg shape rather it is similar to what we call it as a spherical size or shape so since its slave shape is close to the sphere so it is also called a spheroid technically the spheroid and ellipsoid both are same which has two radius and to avoid the confusions throughout this lecture i will use the word ellipsoid 
this ellipsoidal model can be like a used to define size shape origin and orientation of the earth surface very precisely and these kind of ellipsoidal models are truly employed after 18th century so these ellipsoidal models used to prepare a system of framework with the help of latitudes and longitudes and it has like yeah, different center positions depend upon the model we are considering. And all the ellipsoidal model are with reference to the mean sea level and Earth's center of mass. So using Earth's center of mass and shape of the Earth based on mean sea level, these like ellipsoid model have been developed. And these models, we technically call it as geodetic data. So here I am trying to explain the difference between spherical model and ellipsoid model. Both are similar to each other. The major difference is the radius. In spherical model, the radius is same throughout the model. But whereas in ellipsoid model, the radius are differ from one place to another place which is defined as semi-major axis and semi-minor axis. Another interesting information or important point is the spherical model will follow earth center as origin, but whereas the ellipsoidal model will follow a center which is equivalent to center of the mass, which can be defined with the help of ellipsoid fitting the ellipsoid and drawing a perpendicular line from the ellipsoid to the center so if you draw a perpendicular line from the ellipsoid it somewhere like crosses and this point we also call the center of mass using which the origin point is considered and based on this the latitudes and longitudes are constructed latitude and longitudes are angles that we will discuss about it and also it used to identify the height either from the center of the earth or above the ellipsoid. This is the model and above the ellipsoid how much of height you have. So all we can able to measure x, y and z information with the help of this ellipsoid model. So both are apparently used for various applications. This is used widely for a tangible uh, like globe models and this is used especially for uh, like computer based models or computer based representation or flat surface -like representation. Although ellipsoids are good, and these ellipsoids also not model the earth accurately. So here I will explain how it differs. Say for example, this is the actual surface of the earth. It is very irregular and very highly from place to place. And over this earth surface, the water attained a level of equilibrium that we call it as mean sea level. And of course we have our tidal influences. So every day you will find the like fluctuations in the water body depend upon the position of earth, sun and moon. But still over a period of time if you calculate you will find the average level of water. That average level of water we call it as mean sea level. So using mean sea level we could be able to understand the yeah, yeah, equal like a level regions. So this is this blue color area we call it as equal level the region. So by considering this mean sea level we can prepare a ellipsoid that best matches with this mean sea level so that we call it as geoid. Truly geoid is an equipotential surface of the earth's gravity field. Later we will discuss about uh, 
in detail how this x gravity field helps to like prepare the gi surface but you should understand that the gi is the true shape of the earth and the true shape of the earth can be best represented with the help of ellipsoid it's it's best it's not accurate and of course both the gi and ellipsoid never matches with the real surface of the earth because real surface of the earth which is made up of various materials of different densities with different masses so if you look at uh, this picture you can able to understand uh, the difference between these three surfaces this blue color is topographic surface which is very irregular and wherever you have the elevated topography with the higher mass denser materials you have more what you call gravity and wherever you have less amount of mass and you have a lesser gravity field which leads to a downside bend of like gravity okay. so gravity is not equal line it's not like a straight line rather it it varies depend upon the earth's mass properties so it is very difficult to follow the gravity surface with the mathematical model you just you just imagine if you prepare a data with this many like ups and downs it's very difficult to like measure especially calculating latitude longitude and the elevation it's very difficult so instead of following exactly the real surface of the earth called the gi and we could develop a reference ellipsoid that best matches with the gi so this dotted the like brown color trying to matches the ellipse sorry like the gi but it has a differences so these differences we call it as like differences in geodetic surface or we call it as geodetic geodetic elevational differences so so we are trying to match or map the earth surface for which we are using a reference lane or reference plane that we call it as a gi and gi is an undulated uh, like a plane in order to match with a mathematical uh, practical model we are fitting an ellipsoid at the outset we could uh, like prepare a model to represent that surface comparatively accurate using these uh, like approaches so now we have the earth earth is continuously especially in last two decades monitored with the help of satellites and tidal cast stations with the help of these data sets and earth's gravity field and mean sea level have been accurately measured and modeled and based on that earth surface model the gi like the surface the ellipsoid many ellipsoids have been prepared and have been standardized and used as a best fitting like ellipsoid we call it as geodetic datums so we have many datums to represent different regions with a different scale say for example at a global level we have a datum covering the entire globe called the world geodetic system 1984 to cover say for example the continent of north america we have north american datum 1983 to cover indian subcontinent we have everest modify like there are like hundreds of datums which is used for like different scales with the different purposes and of course so we have uh, like uh, best uh, datums for 
local scale, best datums at a global scale. And sometimes we have to exchange data from one datum to another datum that we call it as datum transformation. That is also possible because once you develop a datum with reference to at surface with reference to GI and by gathering uh, the origin point, the parameters of the edit side, we can able to match or convert or transform from one datum to another datum using translations, rotations and scale functions. We are not going to discuss in very detail about the, the technical calculations again, but keep in mind that the informations that generated with one datum can be transferred to another datum with the help of datum properties. So that is possible. So once we have a model of earth or model of a geographical area, maybe a smaller geographical area or wider geographical region or entire globe, then over the model we can able to develop a coordinate system. We call it as system of like coordinates or system of like values. So to locate a point precisely, we can have three different coordinate systems to represent the earth surface which includes Cartesian coordinate systems, geographic coordinate systems and projected coordinate systems. The Cartesian coordinate systems are good if it is a very small or very micro area. At large scale, if you want to map, say for example, a neighborhood you are planning, a like bridge you are planning, or a small like a stretch of road you are constructing, then that area you can model over the flat surface model and you can develop a system of framework. You can identify one point as origin and you can use any unit that can be represented over x-axis and y-axis and z-axis and you can able to like, locate the point precisely. But if you want to locate the point precisely over a wider area, then we have to go ahead with either geographic coordinate system or projected coordinate system. The geographic coordinate system as we discussed, it uses ellipsoidal model of local or global, any global, global or local datum you can use it and using which you can and using a, like a latitude longitude, you can divide the data with the angles of latitudes and longitudes. These angles are determined based up on the basis of origin of the earth, or you can say center of the earth or center of the like ellipsoid, especially this is center of mass. And from there you can draw a line to the intersections of prime meridian and equator and you can calculate the angle in terms of like horizontal in terms of vertical with reference to your point of interest. So this point of interest have latitude of 40 because this angle is 40 and it has longitudes of 50 because this angle is 50 from the reference point of the intersections of prime meridian and equator. So using uh, the prime meridian equator intersection as a reference origin and center of the earth as true origin then you can able to calculate the angles in terms of latitudes and longitudes and likewise you can like identify values for each and every point on the earth surface. So these coordinate systems 
are helpful to represent the entire globe even not only over a globe model even over a flat surface model so the entire graticule we can like open up as a regular grid framework by maintaining one important property of graticule that is called the intersection of meridians and parallels should be right angle okay. so all the intersections of parallels and meridians should be right angle that you can able to prepare with the help of a regular grid work over a flat surface and you can use the same like the logic of calculating or determining latitudes and longitudes these uh, like latitudes and longitudes are referenced with uh, two important lines called equator on a horizontal manner and prime meridian on a vertical manner so this point we call it as zero zero the origin point from where towards east all meridians are serial from 0 to 180 with suffix of east and towards west all the meridians are serial from 0 to 180 with the suffix of w likewise all the horizontal lines towards north pole serial from 0 to 90 with the suffix of north and all horizontal lines towards south pole are suffixed with south from 0 to 90 so like all locations on the earth surface can able to refer within this system of framework and each location will have unique latitudes and longitude values so that we call it as geographic latitudes and longitudes or geographic coordinate system but keep in mind the flat earth surface are like good if it is representing a smaller area if it is a wider area like covering entire globe always you have to like encounter the problem of distortion in scale distance area and shape because when you want to transfer the spherical body into flat surface then you have to do some compromise so if you look at the center of the earth especially along the equator this is the maximum the distance east to west or you can say horizontally okay. so over the equator the informations are truly represented without much distortions because the length of the equator is maintained over the flat area but if you are moving towards pole in order to have a regular framework you are exaggerating see here this corner and this corner you are exaggerating the latitude actually this latitude is less distance have less distance than this latitudes have less distance than equator but still you are maintaining with the equivalence of or equal to the equator likewise if you go to the poleward regions especially at pole pole is a point but the point you have to exaggerate to the distance equal to equator which means here we are doing a higher amount of distance so that's why if you look at in the poleward regions all the scale the area distance shape of continents or countries or places are highly distorted and if you look at antarctica see how it is like a distorted even the north pole and south pole here represented the as a line instead of point so for example the continent of antarctica which is 14 times smaller than Africa, but on a map, on this map, it looks equal in size of Africa. 
which means this is highly exaggerated or distorted. So this is the problem with the geographic latitudes and longitude, especially if you want to represent all together or a map, especially the polar regions. So to overcome this problem, we have one more coordinate system that we call it as projected coordinate system. So in this system of reference, the spherical at surface is systematically transferred to flat surface to show some spatial relationship accurately by systematic mathematical transformation. So we can transfer the X informations over a flat surface using a different projection methods and you can like refer the same system of the like, coordinates and that we call it as projected coordinate system. Very detailed about the different kinds of uh, transformation or called projection and associated coordinate systems we will discuss in next lecture. Thank you.